Good evening. Welcome to the Kingdom of Grace Tuesday night Bible study. I'm Alvin Proctor, the senior pastor of the Kingdom of Grace Ministries. Thank you for joining us here this evening. Uh, tonight, uh, I want to cover uh, several things in Revelation. I, I uh, thank you all for joining me and, and uh, not only joining me tonight, but for those that have been, uh, been um, following us for a while, I really appreciate your involvement. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your words of encouragement. And as always, you know, this ministry is a ministry that's built on um, uh, donations and built on the very fact of um, uh, we're a nonprofit organization. So if you Lord put it on your heart to bless this ministry, uh, please do so. Uh, just know that this ministry is one that, um, that we believe in teaching and giving back. So that's what we do. Not one dime going to my pocket is all for the ministry and the things of God. So just want to say that um, today I uh, want to cover Revelation, the seventh chapter. I want to talk a little bit, bit about uh, the 144,000. I know I've, I've talked to several people and they have a misconception. Some people have a misconception of what that 144,000 is. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about a little bit that I'll touch on later is uh, people talk about, I've, I've heard in some African-American communities um, what I call the replacement theology. And they talk about the lost tribe of Israel and, and, and that black people are the lost tribe of Israel. And, I'm, and I beg to differ, I, I, I do not agree with that assessment or that theory. And, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Jews know who they are. They've been practicing uh, their religion uh, goes way back to Abraham. Uh, I've met in even in Israel when I was in Israel a few years back. I've met some uh, Ethiopian Jews, and it's amazing how they can speak uh, Hebrew. They uh, follow the same practices as the other Jews in in Israel, and they know who they are. And they are, uh, and they're Africans or uh, Ethiopians. So therefore, their skin color, they're black. And, and it kind of took me back to the Word of God in the Bible when the Bible talks about um, the uh, administrator of, of Candace who was, um, who was sitting up in a chariot studying the Word of God when God sent Philip to him uh, to understand the Word. And the Bible said it was so supernatural when he baptized him, explained to him about Jesus, explained to him about the Word then Philip was taken up away from him. And I think about that today because it was Ethiopians that that happened. And, and I see even today when you see the Ethiopian Jews, they know how to trace their lineage back for seven generations. They, they follow the same practices as Jews that are in Israel. And so when you use the term um, lost tribe, I, I want to clear that up, that there is no lost tribe. The people of Israel know who they are. And can we be descendants of Manasseh? Can we be descendants of Ephraim? That, that may be one way of looking at it. But again, it's very clear that the birthright not only went to, uh, uh, to um, Jacob's son or Israel's son, but also to the sons of Joseph, which was Ephraim and Manasseh. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in detail. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Revelation, the seventh chapter, and then we're going to start. And I'm reading by, from the uh, New King, New American Standard Bible, by the way. It's my favorite study Bible. Uh, this heading here said, The Sealed of Israel. Verse 1. After this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind would blow on the earth, or on the sea, or on any trees. And I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bond servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. Let me repeat that. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the tribe of Israel. 
from the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Natali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, uh, 12,000 from the tribe of Eli, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of uh, Zubalon, uh, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin was sealed, 12,000. Now, this is a trick question, and I, I'll give you the answer. There was one of the sons of Israel that was not mentioned here. Do anybody know who it was? It was one of Israel's sons. Do you know? Okay, I'm going to give you the answer. It was Dan. Dan, like I mentioned here, the, the son here of Israel, Manasseh is not Israel or Jacob's natural son. It was Joseph's son. And so therefore Manasseh is listed here where you don't see Dan, the son of Jacob, listed here. And I'll, and I'll get into that later. So God excluded Dan because of his behavior and because of his uh, uh, rebellion. And yet God included Manasseh into the 12,000. And again, I'm going to repeat this. Manasseh was the son of Joseph. But when Israel or Jacob, when he stood up and he blessed his sons, he blessed Ephraim and he blessed Manasseh. And he said, these, these sons will be my sons. And so we find here in the 12, 144,000 in the days to come, as John saw this revelation of those that were sealed, the son of Joseph was included in that bunch. But Dan, the son of Israel, was not included in this bunch. And we'll read a little bit about Dan here in a little bit, if I have the time. Verse number nine says, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could count from every nation and every tribe and people and tongue, standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell down on their face before the throne and, and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, These who are clothed in white robes, who are, who are they and where, and where have they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you know, and he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tabernacle over them. They will hunger no longer nor thirst any more, nor, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any heat, for the Lamb is the center of the throne, will be their shepherd and will guide them to spring of the waters of life, and God will wipe every tear from their eye. Now, I love this passage uh, because it talks about the 144,000, and they come from the tribe of Israel, with the exception of... of um, I mean, whose tribe is your, with, with, with the exception of Dan. And um, it's very um, telling here because there was 12,000 sent from every tribe. And their goal is simply to go and preach the gospel and administer and minister to the people during the tribulation time. And I found that to be so fascinating because we find that not only that God's mercy is everlasting, even when God pronounced judgment, even when God pronounced righteous judgment, he still is, he is always compassionate, even to those that are left on the earth that's coming through great tribulation, where they did not get caught up in the rapture, 
They did not have participated in the rapture, and yet God is still merciful. Now, I'm going to say this to some people. Some people, when you read that, they think that, oh, okay, I can still get saved after the rapture. Let me, let me tell you something. That's not going to be an easy task for anybody to do. The earth will be going through a tribulation and a pain and a suffering like ever before. And even I think about when the Bible talks about the scorched heat. We can't live with air conditioning right now. Imagine you living in 150, 175 degrees uh, weather and an air conditioning won't be able to cool that down. And you're stepping like stepping out on a planet Mars somewhere. Again, don't think that this tribulation time will be a cakewalk. It will not be. It will be torment. It will be great tribulation, just as the Bible mentioned. But God is so gracious. There will be people who were not of the family of God who will turn to God simply through the preaching of these 144,000 people of men that God has selected to go and preach the gospel on his behalf. And I'll get into more uh, um, of what their roles will be. These are all men. There's not women. There's no prophetess. There's no uh, missionaries. Uh, um, it's none of that. The Bible is clear. There will be all men, and I'll read that in a minute, and why they're all men. And there's 144. They clearly would be on a mission, and um, these will be, um, their goal is to go and preach. They would be all Jews. They would be Jewish. They would, um, they would have the seal of God in their foreheads. It would be distinct on who they are, and they will have the power like Elijah had back in the day. And they will be able to work miracles and signs and wonders. And the whole reason for them being here is that they may go out and preach salvation to the Jews and also the Gentiles. I found that to be very fascinating about the grace of God and how awesome he is. And we look at, when we read about these 144 as they were preaching and as they teaching, and sharing the word of God, we see in verse number nine that that a multitude from the great tribulation was delivered, even though they died, even though they were killed, they had a testimony of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that uh, and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands, and they cried out with a loud voice, saying, "Salvation to our God, who sit on the throne and to the Lamb." Oh, of course, imagine this, that great tribulation is happening. There shouldn't be any hope. There's been the, the, the rapture has taken place. You would think there would be no hope on the earth. And out of great tribulation and stress and death and, and so on and, and, and torture, these people uh, heard the gospel. And no matter what they were going through on the earth, they were delivered. And I say praise be to God for that. Uh, as I kind of touch on... Uh, it said, and I want to just kind of paint the picture from the beginning. It says, Then I saw four angels standing uh, at the four corners of the earth. You know, the earth is round, so think about this. They're standing at the four corners of the earth. So, but the earth is round, but they're standing at the four corners of the earth. But the earth is round. <laughs> I'm being a little facetious here. Imagine you flatten the earth out like on a piece of paper like we see sometimes. Imagine each point that would be the corner point of the earth. So if you kind of rolled it back on, so rolled it back up on the ball, then they would be at certain points on the earth. And the Bible said that they held back the winds. They held back the four, it says holding back the four winds on the earth so that no wind would blow on the earth or on any tree or upon any sea. So imagine the wind's been held back and nothing, nothing is happening. It's dead silence, dead quietness until this 144 was sealed with the seal of God. And a seal is often referred to like a signet ring. Uh, if you ever seen somebody a signet ring is they kind of put the wax down on some paper, then they kind of put their seal down on it to seal it. That's exactly all the results that the imprint uh, that's going to uh, authenticate um, who these are and that they're in the ownership they belong to God. So they will have the seal of God in their foreheads. That's what the Bible says. 
and it will be distinct, and it, it won't be the mark of the beast. It will be clearly distinguished that they have the seal of God, and it will be God's chosen ones. Now, I've heard some groups uh, claim uh, that that it's only be 144,000 people that would go to to heaven, and they would be their elders of their particular religion. That's not what the Bible says. It's not what we teach. And I just read for you who the 144 would be. Now, let's talk about the lost tribe. As you just, as I just mentioned here, there is no lost gen tribe. Um, they know their lineage. It's even saying in the Bible when God sealed the 144, they would know exactly who the 40, 144 would be. So how can you say that they're lost if they have already been identified? Now what I will say is the tribe of Manasseh and Manasseh, or how you would say it, uh, Manasseh, who was the son of, of Joseph, uh, who was born in Egypt, along with Ephraim, his son. Now, at the end of the day, uh, it's the same thing. They are the descendants, and they are operating under the Jewish religion, and they're operating uh, with the mindset, as God put forth before them, is, is um, uh, not only they're operating uh, knowing who they are, the Bible is clear who they are. Uh, when you go back to looking at at the the uh, uh, when you go back and look at uh, Israel, uh, Israel slash Jacob, uh, when he when he blesses Joseph's children, he's very clear about who they are. He's very clear about uh, when he blesses his son. What I wanted to read for you is, I, I told you is that when you look at Israel or Jacob, he, he puts a blessing or he blesses his sons. And so, and he, he blesses and prophesies concerning each one of his sons. So if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Genesis uh, 49 chapter and verse number one. Now, I always say if you have your Bible, I mean, the whole purpose of Bible study, I'm, I'm sure... Uh, it's obvious that you should have your Bible, so forgive me when I say that. That's just kind of a, a statement I say. I know you have your Bibles with you. But turn with me to Genesis 49, the 49th chapter, starting with verse 1. It says, Then Jacob summoned his sons. Jacob in Israel is interchangeable. And if you know the story about Jacob, um, Jacob, his name Jacob means supplanter um, or deceiver. But when God changed his name, uh, when he wrestled with the angel, he changed his name from Jacob to Israel. So I will use the name Israel slash Jacob interchangeably, but it's the same person. It said, then Jacob summons his sons and said, assemble yourself that I will make, that I may tell you what will befall you in the days to come. Gather together and hear, O sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn my mighty and the beginning of my strength, preeminence in dignity and preeminence in power, uncontrollable as water, you shall not have preeminence. Because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it, he went up to my couch. Now that's Jacob talking about his son, and talking about his oldest son, and he's prophesying about his sons. And I want you to pay close attention to this because just as he prophesied, it happened. Just as he blessed, they were blessed. Just as he cursed, they were cursed. And this is not God. This is not, this is not a, 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 a prophet. This is his father proclaiming on their sons as he prophesied against his sons and what he see. Simeon and Levi are brothers the source of uh, implemented of viol the uh, implemented implements of violence. Let my soul not enter into their counsel, O oh my. Let not my glory be united with their counsel, because in their anger they slew a man, and in their self will they lamed oxen. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will disperse them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Oh my. Oh my. 
Here's the father cursing his sons because of their cruelty and how mean they are. It says not only did they kill the man, they were just lame. He said and they would, and in their self-will, they lamed oxen. In other words, in that day, oxen was a beast of burden, and people used that, and they would go around just at will, just you know, be butchering people oxen for no reason. And, and 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 think about that for a minute. Now you don't have your oxen to plow the fields to do things. Imagine their cruelty. Number eight. Listen at this, and this is the lineage of Judah uh, of Jesus. Judah, your brother shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the necks of your enemy. Your father's son shall bow down to you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He crouches, he lies down as a lion. And as a lion who dare rouse him up. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, oh my. Nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedient of the people. He shall tie his foal to the vine and his donkey coat to the choice vine. He washes his garment in wine and his robe in the blood of grapes. Oh my. His eyes are dull from wine and his teeth white from milk. Now this is talking about Judah. Talking about Judah. The lineage where Jesus came from and how he blessed his son. Zebulun, Zebulun will dwell in the seashore and he shall be a haven for ships and his flank shall be towards Sidon. Issachar is a strong donkey lying down between the sheepfold. When he saw that there's a resting place was good and that the land was pleasant, he bowed his shoulders to bear burden and became a slave at forced labor. Isn't that this about Dan? Dan was not mentioned in Revelation. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent in the way, a horned snake in the path that bites the horse's heels so that his rider shall fall backwards. For your salvation I wait, O Lord. O oh my. O oh my. Now, Notice that in Revelation, you did not see Dan's name as one that participated of the tribe of the 144 or the 12,000. It said, Dan shall be a serpent in the way. But it said, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribe of Israel. And then, futuristic, Dan shall be a serpent in the way, a horned snake in the path that bites the horse's heel so that the rider falls backwards. Oh my, the rider falls backwards. Dan, who named me judge, fathered an aggressive tribe that would also judge in a nation but would not be known for moral statutes or religious faithfulness. Dan would rather later abandon its land allotment and migrate to the extreme north of Israel Jacob's closing, closing cry expresses hope for Dan in the days when salvation shall indeed come to Israel. Dan, however, is omitted in the list of tribes in Revelation. And it's for good reason. But instead, you will find the name of Manasseh. Let me keep reading. As for Gad, riders shall raid him, but he will raid at their heels. As for Asher, his food shall be rich, and he will yield raw dainties. Nathali is a doe let loose. He gives beauty, beautiful words. Joseph is a fruitful bough. A fruitful bough by a spring. Its springs runs over a wall. The archers bitterly attack him and shot at him and harass him. But his bow remains firm, and his arm was agile for the hand of the mighty one of Jacob. For there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Amen. From the God of our fathers who help you, and by the Almighty who blessed you, the blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep, 
that lies beneath blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessing of your father has surpassed the blessings of my ancestors upon the utmost bounds of the everlasting hills. May they be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of the one distinguished amongst his brethren. Wow, all of that, and because of what Joseph went through and what he did, and how he also saved his father's house and his father, and how they endured, and how God and how his own father pronounced a blessing upon him. And, and let me say this to the men that are out there. If you have sons, I pray, don't curse your sons. Don't curse your sons. Don't walk around telling them how stupid they are, how useless they are. Don't curse your sons. Always speak blessings upon your children. Even when you say some things that you need to do some training on, you want to train them. You want to encourage them. You want to use pleasant words of blessing. Now, if God tells you to pronounce words that are not so encouraging, then you make sure you follow the leading of the Holy Ghost when you do so. Make sure that you're not in your will, but in God's will. In this case, Israel was in God's will when he blessed each and every one of his sons as he prophesied to his sons. He prayed blessings on some, curses on others. So you need to be aware of that. He said, Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning he devours the prey, and in the evening he divides the spoil. All of these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what the Father said to them when he blessed them. He blessed them, every one, with the blessings appropriate to him. Then he charged them and said to them, I am about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my father in the cave that is in the hills of Ephron the Hittite, and in the cave that is in the field of uh, Mac Machpelah, which is about Membre in the land of Canaan which Abraham brought along with the field from Ephron and the Hittites for a burial site. There they buried Abraham and his wife, Sarah, and there buried Isaac and his wife, Rebekah, and there I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is in it purchased from the sons of Het. When Jacob finished charging his sons, he drew his feet into the bed and breathed his last and he was gathered to his people. Let me, let me say this before I close um, uh, with this portion of it. Uh, I, I've been to Hebron. I, I know the exact location. I've seen it. I could not see the burial grave because there is a, there is a uh, church uh, that's built over the grave sites of Abraham and, 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 and his, Abraham and his wife and over Israel. They know exactly where it is. Uh, I've been there. We, we can't see it. We can, we can go into the building, but you cannot go into those sacred areas. Uh, those areas are also controlled by the Muslims, uh, the Islamic Muslim community. And, and any Jewish explorer or, or archaeologist, uh, or, or, I can't say the word, but anywhere, a, uh, a person that did archaeology, and they would have to get permission from the Muslim community just so they could do excavation in that area. And so over time, that area became controlled by uh, the uh, uh, Muslim community. In, in Hebron, uh, I, I was so amazed at what I saw. I was able to go into a building and into portions of the building, which is controlled by the Jews. We were able to have Bible study, watch them worship, be a participate in their worship when they were doing Shabbat. And um, uh, that was uh, on, the, on the Sabbath. And that was such a wonderful time. Um, it was just amazing for me to see that to, and, and to be able to physically tell you that I know where that site is. Uh, it, it's just amazing. I, I still think about it today to know that it is an actual burial ground of what we read in the Bible. So I've been there. And... and Anybody that has an opportunity to go to Israel, I would encourage you to go and go on um, a, a really detailed tour to understand uh, the patriarchs and the, and the trail of the patriarchs. So anyway, as I kind of digress a little bit, I wanted to read the 144. I wanted you to know what they were all about and why is that significant. 
Now, I want you to come with me to, to uh, Revelation 14, 14th chapter of Revelation. Because now we're going to talk a little bit more about the 144. It says here, Then I looked, and behold, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his seal, having his name and the name of his father written on the foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven like the sound of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder. And the voice which I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on the harps. And they sang a new psalm before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who been purchased from the earth. These are the ones who have not been defiled by women, but they have kept themselves chaste. They are eunuchs. By choice, by the way. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These have been purchased from amongst men as first fruit to God and to the Lamb. And no lies were found in their mouth. They are blameless. Oh, praise God. I, I, I want to think about this as I, as I read this. Uh, I think about how these particular men, 144 men, were chosen by Jesus himself, sealed with the seal of God in their foreheads. And they, wherever the lamb went, they went. Imagine having a, what they call an entourage of bodyguards, if you will. And they're not Jesus' bodyguards. You don't need them to be bodyguards. But they were overcoming the earth today. And God and Jesus, everywhere Jesus went, they were there. They were there. They were there. They're not defiled by women. Listen to what it says. It didn't say they were not defiled by a spouse. They were not defiled by women. They are eunuchs. They are chaste men. All men. All men. And they follow the Lamb wherever he goes. Oh, praise be to God. And again, when I think about this, I, I'm so excited about the fact that, and I, and I say this again, that these 144 Everywhere that Jesus went, they went. Now, you think that you think that these men uh, could not be harmed and anything happened to them, but we will find out in the Bible that that the power of the beast that God gave the beast power uh, to hurt these men. After a while, the men will go through the earth and they will they will do all that they can to, um, to preach salvation, preach about Jesus, tell the story about Jesus. And this is what they will do. And they will do this for a period of time until God tells them, okay, stop, it's no more. Same thing when we read about the, um, uh, the two prophets. Uh, at the end of the day, there were prophets that were men that the Antichrist killed and left those men in the streets. And they left them in the streets to rot. And it wasn't after many days that God laid them, allowed them to lay in the streets. And then God allowed them to be raised from the dead. And when they were raised from the dead, they were caught up into heaven. And again, I'm not going to cover all that today. But I wanted to just cover that from the standpoint of letting you see about the 144,000. The 144,000 is not um, a bunch of people... Um, uh, uh, over here doing any kind of thing. They were not. They were, they were witnesses of God. And God allowed them to be witnesses until they were taken up. And then when they were taken up, then you had the two witnesses that God allowed to come on the earth. And after the two witnesses were allowed to come up on the earth, then they served their purpose and they were killed. And they were killed. So, they were God's chosen ones. Why did they kill? Well, they were God's chosen one, and they were slain for doing what? Preaching salvation. Preaching salvation to the world. And again, I wanted to make it clear that the 144,000 is not just some willy-nilly people that just showed up at any point. No, they were witnesses of God. 
and God allowed them to be here. And they were here preaching the word of God. They were here doing the will of God. And you need to understand this. And, and, and for me, this is so important for us that if you don't understand what this is all about, you'll start to make up things in the Bible that's not there. Let me read for you in, in Revelation. Let me uh, start with, with um, Revelation, the fifth chapter. And I'm going to read um, verse number six. Five, so chapter five, verse six. And I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and the elders standing as if and the lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. When he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each one holding a harp and golden bowls of, full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Gold, hmm, bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seal. And for you were slain and purchased for God, with your blood, men from every tribe and tongues and people and nation. And you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God. And you will reign on the earth. Number 11. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders. And the numbers of them was triads of triads, myads of myads, myrads. And thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb which was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature and every created thing which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things I heard to him who sat on the throne and to the Lamb be blessings and honor and dominion forever. And the four living creatures kept saying, Amen, and the elders fell down in worship. Let me continue to read here. It says, here, the first seal, and I, and I talked about this, but I want to go into deeper with it. Here it is, a picture of Jesus breaking the seal, and out of the seal, and you read, um, before he breaks the seal, you have People being saved and people delivered around the throne of God, watching and seeing hundreds of thousands, millions of people that have been delivered, that have come through because of the Lamb. Let me stop right there for a minute. You and I, we have been redeemed. We are saved by the blood of the Lamb, not by any works that we've done. Yes, we had to have faith, but God had to give us faith. And I say that because it's important for you to know that even though we are full overcomers, working to be delivered and to make the rapture, that's our job. Our job is to make the rapture. There will be some people that will not make the rapture, and they will be here lost. The Holy Ghost will be gone. The Spirit of God will be gone. We would be gone. But God is so merciful that before God give up on the earth, the Bible said there's going to be a wind, the four winds of the earth. There will be four angels holding back the wind and holding back. And for a time, it's like everything would just go still, silent, quiet. And when it goes silent and quiet, all of a sudden, now the seal of God is placed on this 144,000. And their whole purpose is to follow the lamb, to listen to the lamb. So when they are, are, when they are killed, and beheaded, the Bible says immediately they will go from, from their bodies being uh, here to being uh, sealed in heaven and around Jesus' throne at all the time with palm leaves in their hands. I'm saying, oh, wow. But they're not here just because they decide, oh, I want to be in the gospel. Nobody's going to want to be in the gospel at that time because everybody's going to be going through something. And everybody is not going to be where they're supposed to be. And you're going to find that if it had not been for God that has sealed these individuals, that 
uh, it would be no way that mankind would be saved or even delivered during that time. The Antichrist will not be, he has such, such a short period of time and his whole time span, everything he's all about will be to kill everything that belongs to God and everything that has, that has anything to do with God. Let me, let me read this before we close tonight. And I'm going to talk, I talked about the 144,000. I talked about, now I'm going to talk about the two witnesses. At each time that even though God was preaching a word with the 144, they, they preached, they taught, and God allowed them to be destroyed, be killed. And I'll read that later. But they were allowed to be killed at the hand of the Antichrist and the false prophet. And, and it wasn't because they were weak. The Bible said that the Antichrist overcame them and, slow, and slew them. Same thing with the two witnesses. Let me read this very quickly and, and, and I'll wrap it up. Uh, verse uh, Revelation 11, talking about the two witnesses. Now keep in mind, don't forget about the 144,000. 144,000 were here, they prophesied, they witnessed. People did not change, even in them not changing. Um, through all that they went through, they still didn't change. And, and, and for some reason, um, they decided that they were not going to change. And they didn't. They didn't change at all. I want to, yeah. So let me read from what I said. I want to read from the uh, 11th chapter. 11th chapter of Revelation, start with verse 1. It said, Then there was given me a measuring rod like a staff, and someone said, Get up and measure the temple of God and the altars and those who worship in that. Leave out the courts which is outside the temple. Do not measure it, for it has been given to the nations, and they will tread underfoot the holy city for 42 months. What did that 42 months mean? It means that the three and a half years of the tribulation that these people are the enemy of God or the nation that is against God and fallen the Antichrist will wreak havoc upon the earth and they will tread the temple of God underfoot. And this number th third verse says, And I will grant authority to my two witnesses and they will prophesy for 1,200 and 60 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive branches in the two lampstands which have been before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire flows out of their mouth and devour their enemies, so that if anyone harm them, they must be killed in this way. These have the power to shut up the sky so that rain will not fall upon the fall during the days of their prophesying and they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every plague as often as they desire. Wow, these two powerful men of God that God would allow to be here. Let me read the footnote. It says, The court of the Gentiles separate from the inner court of the Herodian temple by a lower wall. Gentiles were forbidden to enter the inner court on penalty of death. That John is instructed not to measure the outer court symbolize, uh, symbolize God's rejection of the unbelieving Gentiles who have opposed his covenant people. And you're talking about Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greek, and Rome, all oppression, all oppressed Jerusalem in the ancient times. This reverse refers to the future devastation, a uh, devastating uh, destruction and oppression of Jerusalem uh, by the forces of the Antichrist. Again, the 44 months, three and a half uh, period, covers the second half of the tribulation and coincides with the uh, visible evil career of the Antichrist. The two witnesses we talked about, um, uh, it doesn't say who they are, but you know, uh, some people think it's Elisha, right? Two prophets coming back, one Elisha. Um, and also maybe Enoch. That's that's what some people say could be, but the Bible doesn't say that. So, so or 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 the other suggestion is just like the Transfiguration. 
um, Satan and Jew argued about the body of um, bones of Moses, but couldn't find it. So it may be Elijah and also Moses. So just be aware of, of that. You know, Satan argued about that. So we do know that Moses and Elijah showed up at the day of configuration. So we are sure that this could be the two people that God will be sending back to the earth to preach the word, to be witnesses. And even at that time, uh, they will not just be there forever because the Antichrist, uh, because of the treachery of the Antichrist, uh, they will be killed. And let me read in number seven. So 11 and seven says, when they have finished their testimony, the beast will come up out of the abyss, will make war with them and overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the streets of the great city, which mystically is called Sodom and Egypt where also their Lord was crucified. Those who from the people and tribes and tongues and nation will look at their dead bodies for three and a half days and will not permit their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and celebrate, and they will send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who were dwelling on the earth. Oh my. Number 11, but after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God came into them and they stood on the, their feet and great fear fell upon those who were watching and they heard a loud voice from heaven saying, come up here. Then they went up from heaven and the clouds and the enemies watched them. And in that hour, there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake and the rest was terrified and gave glory to God of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming. So when I said earlier, as I opened up, I said, don't think for one minute because of God's grace and because of his um, uh, everlasting mercies that you think that it's going to be an easy time if you miss the rapture. You, you will not, it will not be an easy time. The people that God will ordain, there will be no other preachers, beyond no other preachers preaching the word of God. That you, you know, some people say, well, okay, I'm a, I want to preach to everybody, but they're not going to hear you because you got left behind. If I got left behind and didn't make it to the rapture, I, I might as well keep my mouth closed and, and, and listen to God's chosen one that he's sending for the salvation of all the earth. Oh, I can tell people, but who's going to listen to me if I miss the rapture? Who's going to listen to you if you miss the rapture? They're going to say, oh, that's nothing to you. But they're going to be met with power. And they're going to have power and they're going to have uh, signs and wonders. So when they follow the Lamb and when they are, are, are preaching and delivering the Word of God, it would be something that would be totally miraculous. And not only miraculous, it would be something that, that uh, um, a God will, will, uh, will protect them until uh, the time for their demise come. And it will come, and like I said earlier, just like the, the uh, two, just like the two um, witnesses, these 144 will meet their doom, and they will die. And the, the Bible says that the, the Lamb will overcome them and overtake them and kill them, uh, and kill them all. And so it's not a time for us to rejoice. It's not a time to sit back and say, "Oh, I'm gonna miss the rapture, but I'll still make it to heaven." You don't get to make that call. So don't play with God. I pray that everyone that's listening today as I read the Bible, and I'll go over this again, that you be prepared to be in the rapture. You prepare yourself to meet God. Prepare yourself now. Be a full overcomer now. And we pray that in the days to come that God will hear your prayer by faith and that you will be delivered. Again, the tribulation time the, will be a terrible time. It's not something you will play with. It's not something you want to play with. It's not something that you take lightly. Don't even put it on your lips to take it lightly as if, oh, ha, 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 ha. Uh, if I missed the rapture, I still can get saved. Don't say that because you'll be making a mockery. And even though I can't say that's total blasphemy, you don't get to make that call. Your best bet is to trust God's grace and that right now, well, this is the time of the, the age of the Gentiles that you will be able to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you repent of your sins 
and you follow Jesus, then the Bible says that you shall be saved. Confessing with your mouth, you shall be saved. And so to take a chance and wait, maybe I might come to the rapture, miss the rapture and still get saved. That's a dangerous game. And you've been presumptuous at that point. In other words, you've been kind of arrogant. And I advise you not to be arrogant because the Bible said the only one person that knows your heart and that's God. And so if God knows your arrogance in that sense, then God will allow you not to make it. If I remind you of scripture, the Bible says after Judas betrayed Jesus and realized what he's done, the Bible said he sought repentance. He sought trying to get right, tried to get right, and could not do it. Why? Because God hardened his heart. How do I know that? Jesus Christ even said it was better for Judas never to be born than to be born and to betray the Son of Man. Now, that's something, that's a mouthful. He was born to be a traitor. He was born to give up Jesus by betraying him. You don't want to be in that position. So I pray right now for you that God will watch you and protect you, give you a good heart, that God would allow you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And by doing so, you will have an opportunity to be saved, to be delivered. So thank you for this evening. I pray that I said something that kind of cleared up scripture. I will continue to follow back up on this. I'm going to talk about the 144. I'm going to talk again about the two witnesses. But I'm also going to talk to you again and really touch on the very fact that during that time, that three and a half years, they celebrated. They celebrated the death of the witnesses of God. That's how evil people on the earth, the Bible said they gave themselves gifts. They were so glad that the torment had stopped because these men had the power to torment them. And yet, after three and a half days, they let their bodies stay in the ground. Wide open, didn't bury them, didn't anything. And the Bible said they rose back again on their feet. And everybody was able to see that. So we'll touch back on that next, uh, next week. At this time, uh, thank you for uh, joining me here. Uh, let me pray for you and let me pray with you. Father, we thank you today for your grace and mercy. We're praying right now, Lord, for everybody at the sound of my voice, that you will open their hearts and minds to receive the Bible, to receive the Word of God just as it is. We're also praying, Lord, those that are by this broadcast or seeing this broadcast who are not saved, but they choose to be saved because they don't want to be left behind. Lord, open their hearts that they may receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They repent of their sins, have the faith to believe that Jesus is Lord and Lord of all. And Lord, by believing that and speaking that with their mouth, they shall be saved. So we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. We pray, God, as we lay down today, that we will have sweet rest and, and sweet peace as we leave. Uh, uh, and we lay down tonight. So we say thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, until we meet again, bye now.